God, Jesus is real. Yeah. Jesus Christ is real. There's a bunch of Jesus. Yeah, yeah but Jesus Christ is real. Yeah. I ain't answered for you, but I know he's real to me. Yeah. 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 I've been in the phrase so many people doubt him. I have doubted. I have doubted. Ain't gonna be you sitting there looking sanctified. You have to. It's a process of growth. Amen. We are in the hour of getting ourselves dusted off, loosed, and letting God have his way. I'll tell y'all, uh, y'all, uh, I, I, I looked over at Prophet Brian and I said, Say, I ain't telling what to say. Because I looked in his face and something was eating him up. Amen. And then he got up and prophesied and said what was eating him up. Sometimes we need to listen to the word of the Lord and the voice of God and stop looking at the person. Amen. That's what's wrong with us. We always want to look at what somebody got on, how they look, whether they cute or not cute, everybody cute. You're a child of God, everybody cute. Why don't you just start acting cute? Hello, when you try to chase that girl, you was acting cute as you could. Yeah, that's why I uh, chasing the Lord. Yeah. Stop chasing all this other stuff that ain't gonna get you nowhere. I said what I said. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Philippians chapter 4, Philippians chapter 4, Philippians chapter 4, yeah, yeah. Dr. Spielman, when I got out the car, he looked at me and said, he got his stuff on pricks today, yep, show him, yeah. <laughs> yep, yep, uh, sometimes on Wednesdays, when y'all need to now be doing stuff, she said, we have church tonight. What are we talking about? And I said, I don't know. I'm glad she knows me enough not to worry about it. Yeah, it could be, it could be 729. And I can still say, I don't know. But how many of y'all know? Because I know who I know is already all right. Amen. Amen. Yes. The issue is, a lot of times when we prepare, we meddle in what God really wants to say. Right. But when you wait on the power of the Holy Ghost, you ain't got to prepare. You just got to remove yourself <laughs> and let the voice of God speak. Amen. Hello, somebody. Amen. Uh, so often we read scripture and we want to line it up a traditional way. But sometimes the traditional way is out of step with where God carried us now. I said what I said. I ain't taking it back either. Come on. We are caught up in what used to be. God said it's a new day. Amen. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The word ain't changed, but the interpretation of the word is for a different season in our lives, and what they interpreted in 1960 ain't going to work in 23. All right. All right. I, know, I know what I'm talking about. Because the issues of the world and the issues in the church are different. Yeah, because back in the day, you ain't talk no smack to the pastor. And, and don't nobody get confused because don't nobody talk no smack to me either. Let's don't get that twisted. I got some bodyguards around here and uh, they don't play. Where they at? All the way through. Front, back, sideways, in arms, dress. Everywhere else. <laughs> Folks don't go. <laughs> Amen. But I'm thankful that I'm in a place in my spiritual walk with the Lord that if you don't say nothing, it's all right with me. <laughs> See, probably scared of the problem with a lot of folks is they don't want to say amen or anything. It, 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 I need y'all to know I'm giving you freedom today. Just say ouch. <laughs> well, sometimes it hurts. When the Lord reveals his word to us, and you're out there looking across the room trying to look at Sister Donna, and Lord said, no, I'm talking to you. I'm not talking to Donna. I'm talking to you. I'm talking to the one who is popped up. I can sing that better than her. And I ain't opened your mouth and said the first word. It ain't about who's saying it the best. It's about are you committed to the worship of God? Is it about are you committed to lifting up your hand and praising the Lord and telling him thank you? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. 
I used to worry about these people because I'm a good enough preacher. I don't worry no more. I know I'm good enough because God chose me. That's right. Hello, somebody. All right. Then he chose me, and then he qualified me. And he keeps on equipping me for such a time as this. I don't go nowhere, and I'm not intimidated by no pastor. I don't care how many letters you got behind your name. The only one that makes any sense is B.A. A lot of preachers got letters and they ain't been born yet. Doctor Doolittle. <laughs> but have you yet said, Lord, here I am? Come on, that's good about that. Mold me. Come on, Make me. Come on, now. After your will. Hey, hey, hey. You know, you gotta get to be on the place where you want to be molded and make it so the people are like you. I already know folks don't like me. Guess what? I don't care. <laughs> Long as I can hear him say, yes, Jesus loves me. Hello, somebody. So today, Philippians chapter 4, beginning at verse 10, down to wherever. I don't know how long ago. Sit down, sit down, sit down, sit down. I want y'all to think. I want y'all to think. Kathy, I want them to let this marinate in their lap. But I rejoice in the Lord greatly. That now, whew, that hit me right there. At the last, your care of me has flourished. Wherein you were also careful, but you lacked opportunity. Not that I speak in respect of want. For I learned, have y'all learned? In whatsoever state I am, therewith to be content. Come on, man. I know both how to be a base and I know how to abound. Everywhere in all things I am instructed both to be full and to be hungry. Right. Both to abound and to suffer need. I can do all things through Christ who strengthened me. Notwithstanding, have well done that you did communicate with my fish. Now you Philippians, now you fellowshipers, know also that in the beginning of the gospel, when I departed from Macedonia, no church communicated with me as concerning giving and receiving, but you only. For even in Thessalonica, you sent once and again unto my necessity, not because I desire a gift, but I desire fruit that I may abound to your account. But I have all and abound and am full, having received, I can't even see it, Epithel, I can't say that word, I know. the things which were sent from me, an odor of a sweet sweat, smell, a sacrifice acceptable, well pleasing to God. Here it is, right here, y'all. Here it is, here it is, here it is. But my God shall supply all your need according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you. Philippians 4, 10 through 19. Divine benefits. Divine benefit, somebody needs to have a chance to come to his. Divine benefit, say, maybe they ain't got one, maybe they ain't got one. All that patty cake. That's how some of y'all friends. Divine benefits. First thing I need you to understand here today, it ain't got nothing to do with you having a new car. Yeah, I got nothing to do with you having on no brand new suit. It has all to do with the supply of your spiritual needs. First thing we have to do is remove our selves from natural to supernatural. That's right. You can't be it supernatural, gospel, run your mouth. You can't be supernatural, being puffed up, thinking you're better than somebody else. Amen. 
You cannot ever feel the anointing or the power of God if you got an attitude in the house of the Lord. Amen. First of all, let me tell y'all something. I won't come in here no more and hear y'all gossiping when I walk in the door. Amen. Where is the preparation for worship? Amen. If you up there talking about who married John and who married Betty and all that, you ain't thinking about Jesus. I said what I said, and I ain't gonna take it back. And ain't none of y'all too grown for me to tell you what I need to tell you. Amen. Walking in, what if a what if a sinner man walk into church, coming in here hungry for salvation, and they walk in, and all they hear is y'all talking about who married who? Yeah. Right. Yeah. Y'all start being humming. You remember how we used to do? Yeah. We had a hymn playing before church started. Right. In preparation for praise and worship. Yeah. But the problem is, we are worried about stuff that you can't do nothing about. You yeah. better be messing with who you married to and get your life together and stop worrying about what's going on in Shirley House. Oh, no. They're not going to clap today, and I don't care if they don't. First of all, being on Real Talk has trained me not to worry about claps. Thank God for Real Talk. Thank God for Real Talk. Because, see, when I'm sitting in front of that, Computer too, I can't see you clapping Amen. or hear you. But you must understand when you say you got divine benefits, you are utilizing the attributes of God in a divine manner, and the natural man will always reap the benefits of God's divine blessings. Oh, that's right. That's right. Oh, yeah. So first of all, I was cutting bushes the other day, David. You know, I'm not a yard man. I worked at the desk for 40 years. I know y'all, man. And I'm out there cutting bushes. First of all, 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 y'all co-pastor had me putting mulch in the yard. Man, your label, Tyrone. You know your cousin ain't no man your label. That's how I'm putting it in the down there. And of course, it's beautiful as it became Tyrone. <laughs> Elder Brown, you know, y'all ladies, I don't let you wear glasses or don't wear glasses. Y'all see stuff that a man can't see. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, Pastor, your sister, your sister, <laughs> looks over there across the yard and she said, Them bushes need to be trimmed. I told her the other day she was talking about, I already didn't talk to Wendell about some stuff. And she said something. I said, I wish you stop trying to run everything and let me just do something. She got so quiet. <laughs> hey, listen, Brian know when he in timeout before you even say anything. I knew I was in timeout. <laughs> <laughs> so I ain't seen nothing else. So I sit there and I said, well, you know what? I think we got some heavy duty scissors in the house. You cut these little bushes because it was green, you know, it wasn't no big old thing like that new toy out. Green bush. I'm just cutting it, it's all looking good, and I would turn my head and I'm still cutting the tip of my finger off. Oh, Lord Jesus. And I'm diabetic. <laughs> so, let me tell y'all what you You're done! <laughs> that old sweet, that old, there's a sweet, sweet morning, usually. She said, you're done. So, you know, you know, just because she said you're done, the man kept saying, I'm going to cut two or three yeah. more just because you see it out right Blood just a run. I said, go give me a watch. No, you're done. And then she got that look like mama. And I said, oh, I'm done. Look, and then, look, I tried to walk by past the field. She up on the floor. So I'm going to show y'all what I do. Mean. Now, here, I'm over here by the bushes. She up there. She said, you're done, sir. <laughs> Look, she's standing right there. I give her such a cute ball. <laughs> it took till this morning for it to stop bleeding. Oh, no. That was what, Friday? Oh, Jesus. My sugar was 264 this morning. And I didn't feel it. It didn't feel it. Usually I feel And in the case, I didn't feel nothing. I said, I'm going to give myself this shot anyhow because I'm in no trouble because I'm going to preach today. Man, you know, I can't see. Yeah. But what I'm trying to tell y'all, 
sometimes you have to listen to the inner man and stop when the inner man says stop. Amen. Don't try to please nobody if God told you to be still. Now what we do, Mother Jones, we try to, well, they, they, they don't need you to do nothing. You put it God to you. So then, she tells the nurse, your pastor cut his finger. The nurse immediately starts whooping on me, David. <laughs> Leave that stuff alone. Hire somebody to do that stuff. So I sent her an emoji. You know, I got a picture or an emoji for everything. Oh, Thank you, Kathy. Thank you, Kathy. I got a picture or an emoji for every reaction. I, I told her, I said, you quit fussing with me. Are you okay? See, I know the tone is bad. Are you okay? You need to go to the hospital. I'm not going over there. Paying your paycheck. <laughs> Going to memorial, giving her some money. But I said, I'm all right. So we go in the bathroom. It was so bad when the cold water hit it, I screamed. Oh, but now wait a minute. I didn't told her that. Now, I want all y'all to turn, if you're on this side, turn to the left, about halfway down the pews, lady with a red shirt on. And look at her and ask her, why do you tell a pastor to put alcohol on it? <laughs> you told me to put alcohol on it. You know what I, you know what I said to her? That's my sister. I love her. I said, oh, you crazy. Because if the cold water made me holler, what alcohol was going to do? Now, y'all already know I had prostate cancer and they took all my uh, prostate, but not about 5%. But I'm telling y'all something. If I had poured that alcohol on me, I would have wet my pants. <laughs> A reaction. Life will make you react to stuff that hurts. And sometimes in our reaction, we get out of the will of God and start acting like what he delivered us from. Y'all say, that's what I tell y'all story about the bush. It ain't got nothing to do with the bush. It got something all to do with it. How do I see God in my life? Look, I say, if you cut the tip of your finger, I didn't let you cut your whole finger off. Right. They miss it. They miss it. They miss it. They miss it. Sometimes the enemy comes in like a flood, but I need you to know if you got flood insurance with Jesus Christ, it don't matter. Amen. Because the bottom line, right, the enemy right. can't stand you praising God. That's right. That's it. Instead of being a retaliating spirit, you ought to just say, God, I thank you. Yes. And you know the devil's going to run then. You know, when you start talking about Jesus is real to me, the devil won't hear that. Then you start saying, oh, yes. He said, what? So here's what God is saying to us today. If you want divine benefits, you first of all got to understand the process of ups and downs in life. And the escape from ups and downs is not your wallet. It ain't your family. It ain't your friend. It's Jesus Christ. Old, old, old people said, Prophet Brian, my hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' love and his righteousness. Today's church is all about entertainment. How can you tickle my fans? Every, every year up here talking about Mary Sue and John getting married before church because your fans have been tickled too much. <laughs> don't, nobody, don't, nobody, don't nobody come through that door and look up and say, uh, into his gates with thanksgiving, his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his name. So now I ain't got no, I ain't got no blood on my paintbrush, but I'm putting a warning over the door. 
Next time I come in here and hear it, God help me. When you come in here, start coming in here home. In preparation for praise. First of all, when you woke up in the morning, you all start worshiping the Lord and praising the Lord in preparation here. Now the whole way, hey, when we come along, mom and have had dinner in a Saturday night. No, man, 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 I'm sitting in a living room in the recliner. Now I'm sitting in the recliner, but in my peripheral vision, I can see them going back and forth. So after about 10 times, I finally said, What are you doing? I get my clothes ready for mom. Puts on her whole outfit, jewelry, all the stuff. Because she was taught preparation. The same thing as children of God. If you ain't read your Bible this week, you ain't prepared for worship. If you ain't got to pray one time, don't even bless your food no more. That's why you be choking in the dark. <laughs> and now they got some kind of burger come out of an impossible burger. I don't. I want to know what burger. I mean, I don't know. I don't want no impossible burger. <laughs> What's it? What is? Oh no, I'm not not desperate, I'm not making uh uh. Glenn said he'll save a vegetable. <laughs> so no, no, I don't want no, no veggie burgers. Uh -uh. God is saying, I don't want no veggie praise. Say it. I want a real praise. Yeah. I want a praise that lets somebody know you've been through a storm and a rain, but because You know what? Let me yes. tell y'all something. I can praise the Lord all by myself because I've been delivered from so many things that I should have been dead. I've been had cancer four, three times, four strokes, three heart attacks. I've been a fool. Don't nobody say amen. Amen. <laughs> but God amen. has been gracious. Amen. And you know what the good part I like about that? I thank God for being a forgiving God. Amen. I think that he looked beyond my faults yes. and saw my needs. Oh, yeah. No matter what y'all do or how you react, I shall forever lift my eyes to Calvary. Oh, yes, Lord. Ooh, Lord, have mercy. Because I can do all things through Christ who strengthened me. Now, y'all, y'all, y'all just read that and you get all excited, but you don't know how the Lord strength you. Hear what they say. The joy of the Lord is my strength. Yes. Where is your joy at? Mm -hmm. It's hot in here. I'll be glad when he shut up. You ain't hot. I got on a vest and a robe. You ain't doing nothing. Pick up one of them funeral home things and fan yourself. <laughs> y'all sit out there in the ball game. You can be 120. You don't care. Amen. Sweat run down all between your legs and where else are you are I'm like, I'm gonna stay till I'm off call. <laughs> he ain't come in the house of the Lord. It'd be five minutes to left. He got five minutes, five minutes, be five minutes to one. He got five minutes. We're supposed to be out here at one o'clock. Uh, let me tell y'all something. Did y'all see a clock in here? Give God an hour and ten minutes on Sunday and think you done done something. Ain't praising no day this week. And coming here, you ain't rushing me no more. If you want to leave back, make sure you leave your offering in the back door. <laughs> we get in such a hurry when it comes to worship and praise. Mm -hmm. But you ain't in a hurry when you call on him when trouble comes. <laughs> Let me 
your behind home. And when you come back, we need to talk speedy. Y'all better stop laying there with something with wrath in your heart. You're going to die in your sleep. Yeah. And guess what? Your wife that you mad at going to have to bury your butt and you going to hell. Yeah. Anything that is a disobedience to God, if you die in that disobedience in hell, you're going to lift up your eyes. And you want to know something else? I ain't going for no ride either. Come in on, he's going to talk right in and die. Right. Like Isaiah said, right dog. Right there. He ain't going for no ride. Right no, first of all, what you getting hot headed at your own white for? Stop that stupid stuff. Oh, I believe I can talk about this because I've been there and done that. Mm-hmm. But you know, I thank God, I ain't got to do that with this one. Mm-hmm. Hello. See, that thing I don't know what I'm talking about, but I ain't no novice. I've been preaching a long time. I've been in school for preaching a long time. But watch this. The biggest thing that I didn't tell somebody about, the experiences of life have taught me there are some things you got to line up with God about. Now, watch this. Let me get into this for free. If you are married to a Proverbs 31 woman, if you are married to a woman who is sanctified, you need to get in the back of your wallet, write it out. Psalms 105, verse 15. It applies to your wife and your husband. Touch not mine anointed, and do my prophet no harm. I love you, but you get on my nerves. She get on my nerves and I get on her, but you're gonna hear me holler now. Stop it. That's what's wrong with church. We can't get along with each other because everybody wanna be right, everybody wanna have the mic, everybody wanna be in charge. You know, you know, you know, I I I I uh, listen. This ain't my first go around. Progressive Praise Ministries next year will be 40 years old. I've been the chief apostle that for 35 of them years. Amen. Hello. Amen. I ain't just become no chief apostle. I just don't go by that stuff. Amen. Just like y'all know, but I don't mind it. Y'all don't mind me being shit. <laughs> Preacher come in and got mad because you stop calling him, talking, wait a minute, this is the house that the Lord placed me at being my people. You don't tell my people how to talk to me. My people love me and respect me. That's just who I am. I'm Tommy. I ain't puffed up. Amen. And just because I got on the rope don't make me no better than nobody else. Because, you know, one thing I've seen, Prophet Brian, you know, we've been everywhere. Folk got on them old pretty roads. Big old cross. Man, we just crossed the man had to cross between his legs. <laughs> I looked at him. And then he crosses me. <laughs> now I cross mine sometimes, but there's a different crossing. Yeah. I cross my legs like this. Yeah, this is crossing. I said, Lord have mercy. Yeah. And the cross was on the floor. But there's too many of us are cowards. And I'm 
tell y'all something else. I'm going to be watch this. You can hold the offering all you want. But you're going to pay the tithe, man. Yep. Yep. Will a man rob God? Every Sunday. They ain't that quiet. But I'm listening. I ain't going to tell y'all nothing about it because you know, as soon as I say something about tithes, some of y'all going to slide down on you. Let me tell y'all something. They'll tell you, if you don't pay the tithes, we've been in this building now 11 years. Lights ain't never been off. Water ain't never been off. Amen. And I can I, I, I do like this. I ain't never missed a chick. Or a meal. Because I'm blessed. And this is a blessed house. Amen. Now, let's put a word here. Before one individual walked in here, the church mother blessed this place. Amen. Every bench. Every bench. And then when we come in here, Pastor Spielman was in the first service as the worship director. See, God had it already divinely lined up. Why you get him? You know. Why you get him? Even one of the preachers that was already here. Why? Why, why you didn't ask me? And I'm like, sit down, shut up. Y'all know I don't bite my tongue. I, I'm like my daddy. I'm not no nice preacher. I tell you the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, and then you have to ask God to help you. Hello. Hello. He come there. It was so many folks in here. I don't know why you asked me to have remarks. <laughs> Y'all know I got big mouths. We were being honest and sitting over here. There were so many folks in this church. We were sitting over here in the chair. It was folks everywhere. It was about 300 some folks in here. The air showing up didn't work that day. <laughs> Call me up for remarks, Brother Brian. I said, first of all, hello to all you spectators. Because some of y'all only here to see what's going on. Why did that old Murray bring them off the hill from that church? Y'all wasn't there when we was up in that church and I couldn't breathe because of mold in Y'all went there when Mother Jones told the preacher, get up, because my pastor got to sit by his machine so he can breathe. See, see, I, I'm saying these things. We have to be responsible for each other. But we ain't. Now, me and I care about the foolishness, but when the real stuff go down, when it's really, 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 and all these tell us something going on with the pastor, she, all food is over. She go to pray. And between me and her, I'd call her and ask for prayer when I ain't told y'all nothing. See, I know I can call them and ask for prayer. I know it. I know it. I know it. And guess what? They ain't gonna tell y'all either. First one I told her I had cancer right there. But you know who knew it before I knew it? We walk around with time bombs in our stomach, in our belly, in our bodies. Yeah. And God covered us and protected us and keeping us. Yeah. And soon as the doctor tells us, you're going to die. Yeah. Oh, yeah. We got to do a go for me. Never live a lie. Ain't frying no chicken. Yeah, no car wash. Now, if you ain't got no insurance, Get your behind some insurance. <laughs> Find, go, go see Lady Powell, Mr. Uh, Mr. O'Dell. Find out how much you need. Minimal. And you can start paying them. It's called pre need eh? You can start paying them. Miss one pack of cigarettes this week. Give them man eight dollars a week. I spent money, $32 a month, start putting towards your girl. But I'll tell you what God loves. Fellowship of love ain't better than that, about it. <laughs> Hello. Hello. 
not been here 40 years putting in pies when well, you should have made sure you took 10 more to sit on some life insurance. We, we, we waste enough to have some life insurance. Yeah, we do. Now, any of y'all ain't got no life insurance, let me know. We can help you get some, and you paying for it. We just will hook you up. We be paying for it. And you ain't got to go around and get no $100,000 life insurance. You know you can't pay for that. You done waited too long. You the old man. You were supposed to get that. You in your 20s. You can't afford no $100,000 life insurance if you in your 50s. You won't never go to McDonald's no more. <laughs> but get you, I'm, I'm serious. Get you some coverage. Your family got to be struggling. And then you go in your closet, you got about a million dollars worth of clothes and no life insurance. It ain't fair. It's not fair. And I'll tell y'all what, I ain't support nobody go fun. Now, I ain't saying I ain't gonna give you no help, but I'm not giving no fuck you no money because they take some money. Hello? Well, you didn't share my go for me, and I ain't ground. Well, come over here and get this $10. <laughs> Hello? Hello? <laughs> See, y'all laughing at me, but watch, I'm gonna show y'all how I can line the script up with what I just said. I learned this 40 years ago. When you quote Philippians 4 and 19, I can do all things through Christ who strengthened me. He strengthens your mind to let you know, make preparations for life at the end. Yeah. Now, back in the day, cigarettes was 10 cent a pack. They still had a little note on the side. Hazardous to your health. We don't like talking about this problem, man. Lying is hazardous to your health, too. Yeah. Gossiping is hazardous to your health. Now, man, don't, need nobody, don't look at certain folks because uh, it, it, ain't, it ain't got nothing to do with how much nobody weighs. I know some folks who don't weigh 100 pounds soaking wet can eat more than me, Brian, Elder, Crowder, Mother Jones, R&D's, Pastor Spielman put together. And I be say, where is going? I was trying to look and see if it was dropping to the ground, but Lord have mercy. <laughs> but see what we do? We want to look at, oh, look at them. I know they can eat. <laughs> it ain't got nothing to do with nobody's weight, how much they eat. And let me tell y'all something. Some people got health issues, their weight right. is a result of. Hello. I, I, I was trying to make her not go on the slump last night. I said, don't worry about that way. How many of y'all watch sisters on BG? Y'all know who Fatima is? She was walking through and I said, you just got a Fatima. Well, <laughs> uh -uh. you ain't seen Fatima. Fatima. <laughs> Venus is dead. Fatima is alive. Y'all know who Venus is, right? Some of y'all don't even know who Venus is. Never mind, never mind. But what I'm trying to tell y'all, stop trying to judge folks. Amen. And you don't know their story. Mm -hmm. That's true. Folks are taking steroids. Folks are having thyroid issues. Folks are having all kinds of things going on in their life. And listen, they don't eat a lot of food. It's a health issue. And it ain't always that they can do nothing about it. Because these doctors, let me tell y'all something, I found out the hard way. Take this pill, then take this pill to counter that pill, then take this pill to counter that pill, and this pill to make the other three work. Am I lying? And we don't read the fine print that says the side effects are weight gain. Kidney failure. I had this pill they gonna tell me to take when I had cancer and talk about we'll make you wanna commit suicide. I said, don't even pick it up. <laughs> but 
because I will not entertain that spirit. Now, let me give y'all this and I'm good. One thing that we allow in our Christian walk is we tolerate too much ungodly stuff. You bring it into the atmosphere yourself. And then you won't get mad at God. Come out. Oh, Lord, I want you to move. He said, I want you to move away from that a long time ago. Yeah. I ain't moving. You could have moved that a long time ago. You like it, so guess what? Live with it. Then you'll get mad at God, Brother Joe. What are you mad at God for? He told you to leave it alone. Now you're the guy you used to it. And can't turn into this. I know. I still struggle with a bunch of stuff in the food department. Amen. I can't walk by a bag of crap without being tripping. Jesus. Lord, you know I don't need this. And then we say, whoo. The Lord said, yeah, okay, go get food in your head, go here. <laughs> See, when we know these things, why are we doing them? Now, folks, if you knew 10 people back in the day, nine of them had hardened other artists. Because they had everything on the hog except for the snout. And then some of them were trying to figure that out. Let me tell y'all something. If you know that affects your health, leave that mess alone. You don't take that good. When I found out what chicken was, no, I'm not eating no more. Uh-oh. I'm not going to kill y'all, but some of y'all will just die if I see it. Yes. But what did God say? I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. He's saying to you, you got all the strength inside of you that you need. You just need to tap into what you need to tap into and make your life better because it's a choice. You go in the car like, you know. First of all, let me say something to y'all. Life is just like I ain't gonna do it, sir. I, I had them so tired till a couple of weeks ago, real talk. And all these turkeys just look at me like <laughs> sometimes it just flows like that. But I want y'all to think about life. Life is gonna be life. But at the same token, if you're under the umbrella of Jesus Christ, you cannot let, not let life overtake you. You've got to have everlasting life in control. Amen. Amen. Yes. 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 So what I'm saying to you, quote the scripture, but apply it to your life, and watch how God will fix things that is chaos, and it won't be chaos no more. Now, everybody have disagreements. But let me give you all another scripture, husbands and wives. Because see, everybody like to say, when I say a lot of husbands, they get all happy. Some of y'all wives be tripping too. <laughs> so, be Isaiah 1 and 18. Come now, let us reason together, saith the Lord. Though your sins be a started, He'll wash them. Why is not? Everything's got two sides to it. You ain't always right. And for the life of me, quit trying to always have your way. Now, let me tell y'all something. Don't y'all be saying I'm talking about Arnis. No. Because if I talk about Arnis, I'm going to say an Arnis or co pastor or first lady or lady Arnis or me, I will say her name. I'm talking about generalization of life, how we act. And Kathy, I've been married enough that I'm a doctor in marriage counselor. I can tell you the whole ropes. Don't do it. Paul said, I'd rather, I'd rather, but it's causing, it's a thorn in my flesh. He said, if you keep from doing it, don't do it, don't, don't, don't do it, don't do it, but I don't want you to die and go to hell, so you've got to get married. Because some of y'all so lustful, you can't stand nothing. Can't even see a pretty woman walk by without you just losing. I, I put it this way. If I can't say she's pretty in front of Arnise, I ain't got no business saying it at all. Amen. And Arnise ain't the only pretty woman in the world. 
Now, you know, when I was young, Mother Jones, I wish somebody would tell me Denzel, though. Look, I would, what are you saying about Denzel? I'm standing right here. You're not Denzel. Well, go on to Hollywood with him and the mother if you win. Well, I put, I, man, Kathy, I couldn't say nothing about no Fatima for 20 years ago. Been a fight. <laughs> that one ain't insecure. I don't care what Fatima look like. Fatima don't live on Fifth Avenue. <laughs> well, and I ain't Zach. Well, I'm Tom. And I'm on nieces. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Do you have them? I'm sorry. I'll say education. Divine benefits. Do you have them? God wants us all to be blessed. And you can be blessed and walk in blessed. And then don't, when the Lord bless you, don't let nobody make you shame that you blessed. The devil is alive. I remember, oh, pulled up in the Ebenezer. Had the Mercedes. Now, everybody know we, listen, I've always had nice cars. Pulled up Ebenezer, had a car full of stuff, but we parked down over there, but then I looked, it was two spaces, so I back up and pulled right there. One of my preacher friends, you ain't got to pull that car up here, everybody know you got a Mercedes. I said, it ain't about the car or the Mercedes, it's about, I got to unload this car, smarty. I ain't got to show off what I got. I'm thankful that I have it. And the one thing about I ain't selfish, I try to help anybody I can. Every night I got no money in my pocket now. <laughs> but I told this, the bank's closed. You know, you, <laughs> what? You got to close it. They have me in the soup line. Y'all be saying, I saw y'all pastor. He was down there in the line getting some food. Kathy told me I could get some. Shut up. <laughs> and then watch it. Sometimes when a, a person doing something, it ain't for them. Amen. Sometimes we picking up something to bless somebody else with. Amen. We so judgmental, think we know everything. Ain't brought the first hamburger to my house to try to help me. Amen. But I thank God for Tyrone and Michelle, Kathy and Glenn, Shirley and David. Brian and Tara, I thank God all the way for Angie, Mother Jones, Pastor Spilling. Why are you trying to say, Brother Tom? I thank God for a church family that don't let none of us go hungry no time. <laughs> we all stick together. I thank God for this place. I don't give what nobody say. We thank God. Now, just wait, just wait, just because we blow it. I mean, sometimes now, sometimes we look at each other cross eyed. Before you go out there and do it, you better straight your eyes back up. <laughs> don't let them go home and you don't roll your eyes and you know, all the way. Because somebody might not make it to the next bit. Yeah. Well, they don't even know that, it ain't worth it. I love everybody in here from the depths of my soul. Yeah, I listen, I ain't looking at whether we preach for 40 something years and sweat and doing all this stuff. No, depart from me. I don't care how you come on. Go, no, no, that way. That's your door there. Go that way. No, I ain't going through all this and die and go to hell. I, I, I'm going to be honest with my friend. I promise this is my last word. word. I love you all very much, very dearly. But I don't love none of y'all enough to die and go to hell for it. That is it. Yeah. 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 I'm done.